Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna be working on the 64 again. Um, I want to grind down around here and then we're gonna cut this out and make a new patch for right here. Um, there's a bunch of dings all the way down the bottom of the passenger door. I have no idea why. Something definitely bumped into it, but we'll just bondo those in, not a big deal. So let's grind this down with the little angle grinder and we'll see what the metal looks like underneath the paint. I'm going to take out a piece right to here because this is pretty rusty right there and I think it'd be better just to cut that out. So let me get my little uh, cutoff wheel. We'll make a cut here. piece we're going to use that as our template look at all this scaly rust behind it not rusted through Go grab a little wire wheel and we'll wire wheel that rust out of there. Okay, I grabbed a wire wheel. I stuck a piece of cardboard over the window. I roll I made sure it was rolled up before I started. And I just covered it up some cardboard. I don't want to get any welding splatter on the glass. Um I'm gonna clean the rest of this rust out with this little wire wheel here. is cleaned off right there but obviously there's going to be more rust there and there there's nothing we can do about that we're not going to replace the whole entire door skin on this car so i'll spray some weld through primer on that and on the back side of the piece that we make and then once i'm done with all this and it's welded i'll be able to get to a little bit of the welds from inside the door i could spray some stuff in there but you can only do so much so <clears throat> Now we need to mark on this piece of sheet metal. We're going to cut out a piece for the patch using this as our template because we are going to butt weld that back in. So the thickness of the Sharpie should 
make this patch close to fitting right away. It goes this way, this is the bottom side. I'm gonna use my little cutoff wheel again. We'll cut these two lines off. It's right in there. Slight, slight curve in the bottom of the door. Very slight. Still a little hot. Feels pretty good there. All right, so now we're going to get this primered, the back side. This is what we're using this weld through primer. I actually ordered this on Amazon because nobody around me had any in stock. Usually Napa does and our paint store does, but everybody's out of it. So I've never used this brand before, but I'd imagine well through primers, well through primers. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And then we can uh, flip that over and we'll start welding that up. Okay, it seems to be dry. I need to grind a little metal for a grind uh, grounding spot. So I can ground my uh, welder here. I'm going to use a blowgun as I go to cool my welds. Uh, minimize warping. I forgot to turn the gas on. All right. That's a little better. Basically, we're just going to keep going around like that, just keeping it, the heat away from each, each other as much as possible. Just 
somebody had leaded this. I ran into lead right there. So, I'm going to have to grind that off. Still a little bit in a little divot right there, but should be okay.
let's uh, grind it and see what it looks like. go grab another disc and let that uh, cool for a couple minutes. As you can see there's a little spot right here that's where that lead was so that's a little bit of a divot there i'm just gonna leave that as is but it feels really good little bit of a slight belly right there which is fine fill that in we'll be good to go so now we have the rust spot fixed on this door Now, if this was like a ten, fifteen thousand dollar paint job, twenty thousand dollar paint job, I would epoxy primer this, and then put my filler over top. I'm going to use a filler that is a direct to metal filler, and it's a fiberglass short strand uh, product, and it can go directly to metal. So we're just going to use that in this this case, just to uh, speed the process up, save a little time. Um, but like I said, if it was a real expensive paint job, I would be shooting this bare metal with some epoxy primer and then doing my body filler over top of it. But this is fine. Um, I do like using the fiberglass resin first because it, if there's any pinholes, it keeps moisture from coming up through into your bottom, into your Bondo or icing, whatever you plan on using. Because the Bondos nowadays and the icings, they don't hold up to moisture. They just start bubbling and blistering and rusting underneath it so this door is done um maybe i'll start on one of those fenders i'm not gonna do too much tonight because i have to make another video for my other channel tonight so um i just wanted to get something started here i'm gonna put this panel inside tonight i'm not gonna leave it outside because i don't want it to start rusting and then tomorrow no point in starting body work on this and when we have those two fenders that we got to do still. So let me get this off the stand. Let me go grab a fender and we'll see how those look. Oh, and whatever bare metal spots are left when I'm done with the body work, we'll put epoxy primer on it before the filler primer, just like we did yesterday. Okay, let's uh, grab the grinder. We'll grind this down and see what kind of mess we got going on to the bottom of this fender.
filler and it looks like somebody had done a patch long long time ago and it rusted through again so let's uh cut it out just past their patch and we'll see what we got going on Probably gonna have to go get another wheel. This one's just about uh, gone. just overlap their patch. We're gonna cut it back. this for our template got a little rust hole here i think we'll fill that in clean all this up we'll probably just maybe we'll just overlap a patch on that but we'll clean it and primer it first um see this car came from canada so chances are this car was probably driven in the winter after these patches were made and you can tell that the patches were done on the car the fenders are never taken off the car so you know, you have brand new metal right here. And it was bare metal. No primer or nothing on it, and it just rusted through. So, I mean, there's only so much you can do, you know. So that's just a prime example of trying to get some sort of treatment on the backside of this metal. Um, even though I welded that door with primer on it, I still have a bare weld. You know, and there's a bare weld hidden in the door that you can't get to. And it's just going to rust. You know, obviously, if the car's not driven in shitty weather, raining and snowing and everything, it's probably going to last a long, long time. But if you start, you know, driving this in salt and rain, you know, even if it's not snow and, it, and it's springtime, and there's still salt on the roads and you get salt up into here, you're done for. It's, especially with bare metal, it's just going to rust. So um, let's... Uh, wire wheel this down this down here is all solid so i'm happy with all that down there the original bolt hole and everything's still there it's just rusty we'll wire wheel it all down but let's wire wheel this area and we'll make a little patch for in here <sighs> wonder if i should cut it out maybe i'll just cut it out repairs I'm doing are not like a hundred percent the right way to do it it's just a way that's gonna definitely last a long time especially if this car is not getting driven in crappy weather anymore
also put a rust converter on this. That would definitely help. weld through primer on here right now because I'm going to make that patch and you can get to it from the back side. And I'm not really going to worry about cooling this brace part because it shouldn't really warp. It's pretty thick. Um, here's what I cut out. Obviously it needs to be a little bigger than that. So let's see what we can draw up here. Not to worry about these moldings on the fender, they're gonna get changed. Um, let's just make it a little bigger, we can always cut it down. using thicker steel whenever possible because it uh, just welds better got more material to work with I'm butt welding everything so it should be good when I grind it flush now, I just kind of eyeballed this but I'm gonna have to let that sit for a minute that's like really really hot um, what I'll do is I'll probably get this patch made and maybe we'll make one right here and I'll probably call it the end of this video and then tomorrow i'll be home from work earlier we'll get this patch done we'll get the other fender fixed um looks like we just have some rust going on here uh we might have an issue there i'll have to see if i can separate these two pieces somebody welding them together so um i don't know what we'll do with that yet maybe we'll just get in there and grind all that out i don't think there's an actual hole i think it's just got some rust but um, we'll get these two fenders done tomorrow and we'll get all three of these body worked and in primer tomorrow night. So then basically all the loose panels are in body work and primer after tomorrow night, which um, hopefully that paint I ordered from eBay comes by the end of the week. I don't know if it will or not, um, but I wanna do a bunch of sandblasting. This front cowl piece, I'm just gonna sandblast that. I'm not going to waste my time sanding it and trying to, to scuff up all inside those fins and everything. Screw that. I'm just going to sandblast it. I'm going to sandblast those inner wheel wells. I'm going to sandblast the uh, hood latch, the hood hinges, all that stuff. Just sandblast them and be done with it. Um, it saved me a ton of time. Let's see if this cooled off at all. It's a little cold out today, so it's still pretty warm. Still pretty warm. But I guessed on this size, it's not too far off. I'm gonna have to put a second piece in because it bends down. I could have probably made it in one, but we'll just make it in two pieces. I'm gonna take my grinder and grind a little bit off this edge here. welding gloves I just not wearing them today 
a little bit more off. fits really well. I'll grab my welder here and we'll uh, get that welded on. having a problem with my regulator it's putting out a little bit too much gas and I can't seem to get it fixed I'm gonna have to buy a new regulator I think but anyways um, so now we got that need to cut that back a tiny bit and then we're gonna make a little piece that goes on the bottom trying to keep the camera running so you guys can see how quick this actually goes. Okay, now we need a little three-eighths of an inch piece. try to eyeball it again see if we can uh, see if this thing won't bounce around too much on me back and see if we can get that to fit all right another another good guess should be good there good enough
okay. That's good. Let's fix this last spot there. Take it one piece at a time, like Johnny Cash, and you get it done. It really goes kind of quick. And I know that this piece I just cut out, this upper part's the right width. So I try to use everything up on this sheet metal as I can. Try not to have too much waste. Stuff's getting expensive. Just about fits. Pretty good there. I gotta get my helmet, but I'm gonna throw a tack on it real quick. Close my eyes. It's hot. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna grind it down a little bit. Now this is a budget way of doing this. You can obviously buy this whole brace in there and you can buy the lower part of the fender. Find my grinder and my glasses.
Okay, we'll just let that set tonight. And then uh, tomorrow we will continue on with finishing this fender and the other one, getting these sanded down and getting them in primer. Then we'll be looking pretty good on this project. Obviously the um, quarter panels are gonna need a, quite a bit of work. I think the quarter panels are gonna have to probably make a pretty big piece to fix those. But uh, we'll, get it, we'll get it handled. We'll get these fenders done. Um, if that eBay paint comes this week, by the end of the week, I'd like to be painting these loose panels this weekend. Um, get them all painted let them sit while I'm working on the body because then by the end of next week I can have the body painted and we can start putting this thing back together um, right here is a real bad spot these are 64 impalas are famous for this they had a rubber that goes on here and the rubber just held the water in so we're gonna have to cut this out here and put a new piece in um, it's too thick two pieces thick um, all this is still good just surface rust but there water definitely sat i'm guessing probably leaves and stuff because you can see there's probably debris that got stuck in there behind the rubber and that was it it just sat there moist for a long period of time frame is solid it's just got some scaly rust on it you know the next owner wants to get under there with a wire wheel and clean it up you know you can definitely do it but this should be a pretty decent car when it's all done. You know what I mean? This is a nice car that you'll be able to drive around. You'll be proud to drive it around. It's not going to look like crap. It's not going to be a 100-point show car by any means. Could it be? Yes. Um, you know, but you got to know when and how much to put into these things. You know? So, all right, guys. That's going to end this video for tonight. we got a couple patches made. We'll finish them up tomorrow, and we'll start doing the body work on them. Thanks for watching, guys. If you uh, like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. I know some people are going to look at this and be like, this guy's an idiot. He's doing it the wrong way. You know, this is just how I do it. I'm not, And I've already said, this is not the exact right way to do this. You know what I mean? But it's going to work. So, all right, guys, you have a good night, and I will see you later.